How do you install and set up the ICM 493? Today I'm going to be installing the ICM 493 on my mini split system. And if you want to know how to install this, I'm going to show you how. I just replaced the inverter board last month contained in this outdoor unit for my mini split system. There was a storm, the next day my mini split would not work, and I had a bad inverter board. And that's the reason I got this ICM 493. I'm going to show you the easiest way to install this, show you what supplies I use and what tools I use. And if you're curious what the ICM 493 is, the ICM 493 is an advanced single phase line voltage monitor with a bank of surge arresters for added protection against lightning strikes. Hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. Let's get started installing this control. So what do you get when you order the ICM 493 and how much does it cost? What do you get? You get this outdoor waterproof enclosure and this is where you're going to mount the control part, the board, and you get this board and then you get this 40 amp contactor and they have models that have a 60 amp contactor and that's for your bigger four or five ton units. Now this is the part that we're going to mount right here. What does this cost? It costs around $300, which I think is excellent because I've seen products that are line voltage monitors and then I've seen products that are surge protectors and this is all in one. So 300 bucks compared to the price of a new mini split or an inverter board, which I just had to replace, which was around $700 this would have protected my inverter board and I would not have to pay for that part. I got my tool bag, I got my tubing cutters in there, a hammer, a flathead, I got my drill pack of screws, this is what I'm going to use to mount that enclosure to the wall, and then I've got some conduit, some liquid tight flexible conduit and some conduit fittings. Now here is where I'm going to mount that enclosure right beside my disconnect and I'm going to go ahead and start with step one. Step one is take and disconnect the power. You do not want to get shocked and if you're going to be working in your disconnect you need to go farther back to the breaker to your breaker panel and actually cut the power to the disconnect because we are going to be working right there. Now let's get to the next steps. Now that I've got my breaker off inside I'm going to take my disconnect box apart here so that I can see the wires. And what I'm going to do is the wire that comes into the box, I'm going to leave alone. But the wire that goes to my mini split right here, I'm going to take it loose. Okay, I'm going to take it loose. How do I do that? Well, I make sure there's no power. If you need to use a meter, use a meter. I'm going to take this conduit fitting loose right here. And then I'm going to take the two wires loose that go to the mini split. Now I took the wire loose. This is 230 volts. So I have two power wires and then one ground. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where my box is going to go. And I'm going to put my box right here because one, I can get to it. I can easily see it, but two, my conduit right here will reach. Okay. And I'm actually going to look at where I'm going to install my wire. So how do you do that? You look at the bottom of the box. The bottom of the box has four knockouts and it looks like each knockout you can have two different sizes. It looks like you can have half inch by knocking out the middle or three quarter by knocking out that outer edge. And then you've got another one here which looks like a one inch and then inch and a quarter. Okay, so half inch, three quarter, one inch, inch and a quarter, half inch, three quarter, one inch, inch and a quarter. So what I'm going to do, be doing is I'm going to be knocking out this one and the outer edge and then this one and the outer edge. And I'll mount it right here. Okay. I'm going to show you how to remove a knockout. Take your flathead screwdriver, take your hammer right here. Okay. And then just gently tap it and then eventually it comes out. You can also come in here and you can cut this like that, like that. And then once you get a hold of a piece, wiggle it back and forth and it'll come off eventually. 
Now we're ready to mount the box. We've got four holes that we can use to mount this box. And I've got my 5 16 my drill and extension, and then some 5 16 by inch and a half screws. I'm gonna choose to mount my box about right here. And just like that. It's already secured. Now, something you may wanna do is get a little torpedo level to, to uh, put it on top while you mount it. That way you make sure it's nice and level. Okay, I'm gonna put the last two screws in. And then after I do that, we're gonna work on the wiring. Box is mounted on the wall. Now I'm gonna bring this conduit right here into the right side of my box, just like that. Make sure we get enough slack and we're gonna take this into the right hand side of our box. So, as we don't want our wires crossing. And once we attach the conduit fitting into this knockout, then usually you wanna get a one hole or a two hole clamp and you wanna clamp that conduit below the box to the wall, that way it's secured. Now that we've got this wire attached, what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what conduit fittings we're gonna use, whether it's gonna be a 90 or a straight. Now right here, I'm gonna use a 90, and right here, I'm gonna use a straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my conduit that I'm gonna be using, and I'm gonna put it in this side of the box, and then I'm gonna go over to this side of the box to figure out how much I'm gonna use. And for me, it's gonna be a very small, short piece. And it's probably gonna be about right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use tubing cutters to cut this conduit. Super simple and easy. Well, then I'm gonna take the wiring that I'm gonna be using, which for me, it's gonna be number 10 wire which is about 30 amps, 35 amps at the most. I'm gonna take and run that wire through my conduit like this. Make sure I got enough slack. And then I'm gonna take my cutters and I'm gonna cut it off like this. Then I'll take both my fittings, my conduit fittings, and I'll attach them to the conduit. Like this right here. And then this side I said was gonna go in here like this. All right, that one's attached. And then this 90 is gonna go right here. Now that I have the conduit and the wiring coming from my disconnect box, going to the ICM control enclosure, and then coming from the enclosure going to the unit, now I'm gonna strip the ends of the wires and mount my board and then start wiring it up. Time to get the old wire strippers and strip back the wire. Make sure that you don't have too much. Make sure you have the right amount. And make sure you're using the right wire. This is Romex wire. And I'm using Romex, but you may need to use stranded wire. And you may need a certain color code. If you're not a professional, please seek professional advice. And please let a licensed HVAC professional or an electrician install the ICM 493. Do you have to have that to install this? No, you don't, but you have to have some experience with working with electrical circuits that, or electrical wiring experience. That way you do it correctly the first time. All right, I got everything stripped. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wire in the disconnect box. That way it's done. And then I'm just gonna work on the ICM 493 control. Now our box is mounted, our wires are run, and now we're ready to mount the control. So what do we do? Well, you can see there's a screw hole right here and here on this side of this control or this front panel what you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to put one side in angled and then slide the other side down so it can't come out see that now there is a little package with some screws and you can see these two larger screws right here this is what's going to hold that board in and what i'm going to be doing is using a Phillips screwdriver. 
and I'll just take on each side, I'll line up that little hole and then go ahead and mount my control in. That way while I'm wiring, I make sure it doesn't slip out. And just like that, now it's not going anywhere. Now let me show you the wiring. So I've got the power coming in, going to this side of the contactor. You know this is the input because there are two wires and you can see the terminals are labeled T1 and T2. So this is the power coming in from our disconnect going into this side of the contactor. And then we've got a ground lug over here for our ground wire. And then on the other side, we're coming out. This is our power output. And this is going from the ICM control back into the air conditioning system or the mini split. We've also got another ground lug over here. So what do we do now? Well, we fold it up and we've got a screw hole right there at the top and you've got another screw. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put that screw in right there. We're gonna turn the power on and I'm gonna show you how to set this thing up. Now you can put that screw in to make sure that this is secure. And then you've got a cover panel right here. Look at this nice cover panel. You can put that right there and then you've got another screw. So if you don't want people to easily be able to access this, which I wouldn't, you can put this cover panel on. All right, let's fire it up. Breaker back on. Now we've got the power on. So let's check the voltage coming in here to the ICM 493. We got 246 volts. So remember that, 246 volts. Now let's set this thing up. Oh, and be careful. The way you have your wires, make sure that nothing's gonna touch and short out. And don't open and close this like I'm doing here with the power on, anything can happen, but you do want to make sure that you're not closing the lid on one of the wires or pinching one of the wires. That would be a shame if you installed this and then you uh, caused a short. Now I'm going to go through the setup. So you're going to want to read right here underneath installation because this is going to give you the information you need to set this thing up. But the first thing we're going to do is hit the up and down button for more than two seconds. When we do that, it's gonna display a line voltage and it's taking an average reading of the voltage. Now, when it gets within one volt of what you read with your meter, then you're gonna hit the setup button. So when it gets around 247, I'm gonna hit the setup button. That's gonna lock it in. Now we're gonna move on to the next part of the setup, which is you hit setup and you can uh, set the voltage that you want. So we want 240. And this control right here is ideal for mini splits. And I'm going to show you why, because after you hit 240, that's what we want to set our mini splits for. We're going to hit the uh, over under voltage percentage for five. Now I'm going to explain to you why we want to do that. But first we're going to keep moving. So go through setup anti short delay. This usually comes for 30 seconds. So we're going to set it for one minute, hit setup, reset mode. Uh, do you want it to be an automatic reset mode? So if this has a fault, it's going to automatically reset. Or do you want a certain amount of trials? You want one trial, you want it to try two times, three times, four times before you have to manually reset it. I'm going to do auto mode. Now let's go to mode, allowed MOV fail. Now it's recommended that you set it for four, that you do not set it for five. And I'm gonna explain why. I'm gonna set mine for four. I'm not gonna set it for five, okay? So four, let's go back to select remaining MOV. Okay, so line voltage, we have five remaining MOVs, fault condition over voltage. We had a condition just now. We had an over voltage condition. Line voltage is 256. So I'm gonna talk to you about why we set up the line voltage for 240 and the over under percentage for five. And then also the allowed MOV fails for four. 
Why set the line voltage to 240? And why set the voltage under over percentage for 5%? If we set it more than 5% and 240 volts, then we're gonna experience voltages over 252. And we don't need that because that's gonna damage the inverter board or a component within the inverter board. So if you set it for 240 volts and then 10%, then you're going to have a maximum allowable voltage around 260 volts and that's not going to be good. Allowed MOVs. Why do we recommend to set it for four instead of five? You have five MOVs inside the ICM 493 and those are metal oxide varicitors and if you have a lightning strike or a power surge those metal oxide varicitors or MOVs are, are what's going to go out before your equipment goes out, right? But if we set it for five then that means all five of those are going to take that surge or that lightning strike. And then what happens is you don't have a safety. So if we set it for four and then you have a lightning surge and then it knocks out four, but you still have one, then you can go back into the control setup and you can set it up for one. And then you still have a safety or protection for your equipment. So don't set it for five allowed MOVs, set it for four allowed MOVs. That way you have one for a backup. Because of course, if you set it for five, you have a lightning surge, it takes out all five, you still have your equipment has voltage, but you have no safety. This is advice straight from ICM Controls, which is your American made control company who is helping to protect your equipment and save you money. Remaining MOVs, we have five. Fault condition over voltage shows me what fault we have. We can click the fault button if we need to see the fault. Go to setup, line voltage 240 over and under, voltage percentage, one minute, allowed MOV fail, set it for four, don't set it for five. Remaining MOVs, I got five. If you wanna know what an MOV looks like, I'll show you. See these little black looking relays or squares? Those are MOVs. So if you set it for five, it's gonna take all five of these out. If you set it for four, it's gonna take four of them out. So the more protection you have, the better it is, but you also want to think about redundancy and having the ability to still have the safety, still have the protection, but still also be able to use your equipment. Now what can happen and what has happened to my situation here is the voltage is too high, the control keeps tripping and creating a fault and my equipment will no longer run. So I'm gonna explain to you what I'm gonna do so that if you have a situation where you install the ICM 493 and your equipment will not run because your voltage is too high, I'm gonna to explain to you how you can get that voltage under control. What I do is I install something called a buck boost transformer or a step down transformer. You need to get a electrician to help you to get your voltage under control. And if you wanna learn more about the buck boost transformers, then go check out the link down below. I've got some information for you on that. Just in case you have this situation, you'll know what to do. This is a buck and boost transformer. I wanted to go ahead and show you what it looks like just in case you do run into this issue and you need one. This is a buck and boost transformer. What it does is it bucks or reduces or it boosts and raises the voltage. So it either reduces or raises the voltage. A good example is taking 208 volts and boosting it to 230 volts. This is what it looks like. Link in the description for a video if you wanna know how to install this. Now my mini split's back up and running, and now I don't have to worry about lightning strikes, power surges, and if I have a power surge, if I have a problem with voltage, this device will let me know. If you want more information about ICM Control's ICM 493, check out the link in the description for this product to learn more. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. Let me know if you did learn something, what it was down in the comments. If you got a question, questions can become content. So put your questions in the comments as well. Go check out my playlist, HVAC tips for technicians and tips for homeowners if you want more videos to help you learn more about HVAC. Hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You've been watching HVAC tips for technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.